Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Doesn't get old. Uh, I don't know, 7,000 times, 8,000 times. It's wonderful. To all the people, men and women, moms and dads, uncles, aunts, who cooked, who prepared the food, who bought the presents, who did the work, on behalf of God, thank you. Uh, not everyone gets the credit. My, we had uh, Christmas at my brother John's home in Edgebrook, Illinois, with uh, his wife. They both did the cooking. My mom made the pierogies. Um, I, of course, I said the prayer. I'm a professional at that. Um, but it was, it was very nice. All, all the grand, the, uh, my niece, I have, I have six nieces and nephews. They're all older now. Uh, my godchild, her name is Kelly. She's on a volleyball scholarship at a private school in Iowa. She brought home a boy. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> so my brother John, who's all not together, he's not all right. Um, he had, a, he had a tough high school, some tough high school years at St. Pat's. I, I can't, I don't want to mention my last name because if, if you're visiting, because you might want to hunt my brother down. Um, but he made a toast. He made a beautiful toast after the prayer. And the, and the boy's name is Bo. <laughs> and he raised the glass and he says, Bo, I just want you to know if I hear anything at all negative from Kelly about your relationship with, her, with, with you, I will hunt you down. <laughs> And I know people, and I will find you. I can't tell you the rest, it's not good. No, no, then he said, and it wasn't me, I can say it, it's not me. He goes, and I will treat you like a dog with rabies. Uh, anyway, uh, really, Merry Christmas, it's great, we, we got through, we got through. Hope you didn't get in any fights. Uh, Bo was a Christian, I didn't take the bait. Uh, uh, someone said, are you Catholic? No, 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 no way. I'm a Christian. <laughs> I didn't touch the bait, I didn't touch the bait. Um, it, 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 I just heard a faint thing in the background, you know, because uh, there are two tables. There's, a, there's an adult's table and a kid's table. I sat at the kid's table now. Uh, I got to sit at the adult's table. But, you know, the, the common things people say about Catholics, like, why do you have so many statues? To which I'd like to respond, well, why is there a crib scene in the middle of some of your city halls? Or in the, in the front of your houses? So it's okay to put it out in front of your house on Christmas. It's just not okay to bring it inside the church, okay? But having said all that, uh, it's so important. There's three quick points to the homily. We're trying to make them quick. Uh, family, the holy family, um, where Mary says, Jesus, why have you done this to us? What an interesting line. The Blessed Mother with anxiety, with, with her heart torn for looking uh, from, looking for Jesus. Why have you done this to us? Number two, uh, everyone's looking for you. What is that line? So why have you done this to us? Number two, why were you, oh no, he says, why were you looking for me? And number three, our own parish family. First and foremost, you heard in the second reading, we are all members of the family of God. Of all the ways to identify your innermost core, who am I? What am I? Who am I inside? You're a child of God. Correspond with that identity. Be, uh, uh, realize that identity. Alter, alter your mindset to identify. You're, we're all God's children. Black, white, whatever, the black, fill in the blank. Hyphen, hyphen, hyphen it out. We're first and foremost children of God. You're not Democrats and Republicans. You're not this or you're not that. You're children of God. There's no doubt, uh, young minds, young people of God, if the world opened up to this chief means of identification, the world would be a much more peaceful and beautiful place. We are all children of the same loving Father. That's the first point. And now that's point number one. We all agree. You're in church. Number two, family. Let's not get into alternative family today. Let's not, let's not heighten diversity today. Let's just stick with unity. Let's stick with unity today, okay? Family is the basis of civilization. It's the first school to learn truth and justice and love and faith. So for children, young people, Young people means I'm, I'm 49, I gave a homily the other day, my mom still, still puts out my clothes. So I think you're a child as long as you have a mother above you or a father, you're still, you're still, a, you gotta obey. Jesus went home and said, he went down with them and came to Nazareth. This is God, the son who became man and was obedient to them. 
children, young people, young adults, college kids. It's great to chirp mass. The fourth commandment stands until you breathe your last breath. I don't know what goes on in heaven. It probably goes on in heaven. The fourth commandment probably goes on in heaven. Well, sure it does. That's why we use Mary sometimes to be an advocate for us with her son. Because remember the wedding feast when Jesus didn't want to do anything and Mary interceded? And then Jesus goes, I, I don't want, I want nothing to do with this. I want to keep my divinity hidden. And then Mary says, hey, do whatever he tells you. And Jesus responds. So if you have a parents over you, we all do, unless, unless they're all deceased and in heaven. The fourth commandment stands. Young people, the fourth commandment stands. Don't take it to the bank. There's little or no interest. Take it to heart. Obey your mother and your father. And obey your mother and your father is not this. This is not obey your mother and your father. I'm playing Nintendo. I do not play Nintendo. This is an example. Do not like playing Nintendo. I'm texting in the restaurant. I'm playing Nintendo. I'm on the phone. I'm doing, I can be, I can be, I can be in the middle of solving the problem of cancer. And my mom knocks on the door. It says, Billy, it's time for dinner. Yeah, I'll be there. That's not obeying. Excuse me, that's not honoring. You might be obeying your mother. That's not honoring her. Honoring is obeying with respect. How much of that has been lost? I know it's hard, guys. Young people, it's hard. But you know why? Because people who don't, who don't go to church, who don't get talks like this, who don't have athletic coaches in their lives, who don't have that structure or discipline, everybody's just doing what they want to do. That's not how it was meant to be. Jesus obeyed. Obeying works. You know the Latin root of obey? The Latin root, to listen. To listen. Can you imagine the scribes and the Pharisees surrounded by a 12-year-old boy in the temple while Mary's looking for him? And they were just shocked. They were listening. Where did this kid get all this information? I wish you'd say that about your parents. Where did my parents get all this great wisdom from? They do. They have. They can. They will if you let them. They know this stuff. We all know about the, the, the fire, the hot stove. You touch the hot stove once. Every person, there's probably a few exceptions, I'm sure. You touch the hot stove, ow, I'm not going to do it again. You don't have to touch proverbial hot stoves. Listen to your parents. And mom and dad, this always has to work. When Billy or Susie comes home and says, no, I get to stay out till 12. I get to, I get to play the 10 till 10. I get to text with, I don't know how many gigabytes, blah, blah, blah. You say, and we stick together, that may happen in, in Johnny Box and Donuts house. It doesn't happen here. And I mentioned this on Christmas. I, why am I not a parent? First of all, every woman in the, in the world is grateful I'm not married. Point number one. <laughs> Point number two, I don't know what I would do, Mom and Dad, if I was married and I was working for a living for, for a decent wage, and I gave my child a present and he opened it up and he threw it away and said, I didn't want that. I can't imagine what I would, how I would feel, what I, what, what I, what I, would, what I would do. So young people, please, literally, for the love of God, and to be true to your nature, you're not in charge yet. But I don't know, why, why do this, uh, people are older, you older people, like me, why did it work when we were kids? It just worked. When, when mom said, this ain't your house, it's my, it's, you don't run the house. Your dad runs it, I run it, my mom ran it. My mom ran the house. We all knew it. And if we messed around, there were consequences. Not idle threats. There were timeouts. There were deaths. There was spinach. There were green beans. I didn't get my favorite food. Did I ever go to bed without di uh, uh, dinner? I don't know. I think my mom probably snuck it in after, after my dad put the foot down. But the bottom line, we, we need much more uh, discipline, much more respect. And mom and dad, look at it this way. When Mary says to Jesus, when Mary says to Jesus, they're looking for Jesus for three days. Imagine, I can't even, I don't want you to imagine this. Your child is missing for three days. And then they finally find him, and Jesus got this answer. 
I mean, I don't want to read too much into it. We'll do, I can do this in private with you. Uh, Jesus is like, hey, what's the big deal? You know, I'm doing what my father asked for. No, sorry, that's an Italian accent. <laughs> he, he did it in a Jewish accent. Ma, I, I can't do Jewish accent. I, can, I got to talk to Rich Little and work on my Jewish accent. But there's a Jewish accent. There's also a New York Jewish accent. We won't go there at all. Okay. But it's, it's funny. It's funny. He worked with me. But Jesus had sort of a glib. It's a big word. Glib. It was sort of an offhanded comment. He didn't seem to appreciate his mother's distress. She was heart-wrenched. She was anguished. Hey, where you been? What are you doing? Think about this, Mom and Dad, with, with, with troubled children. And, and, and we all got them. We all have them. <laughs> I was one of them. But, still am. Um, but if Mary and Joseph were not spared the drama or the charm, trauma of raising a child, one child, why should we be? Why should we be? There's going to be hardships. Look, when, when, when people call me, and I, I, I'll do kid counseling better than I do marriage counseling. I'll, you bring your kid into me, I'll yell at them. I have no problem yelling at your children. And I've done it. But what I generally do when a parent calls me with a problem with a kid, dope, alcohol, pornography, there's the main, those are the main issues. Just rampant disobedience, rampant disrespect. I try to get mom and dad in the middle. I don't, want, I don't want you thinking this is the end of the world. I don't want you thinking this is nothing. I want to deal with it where it's at. Billy, do you have any idea the sacrifices your mother and dad make for you to keep you in your clothes, in your house, in your schools, with the opportunity you have? Nah, I don't care. Then, then we, we, come up, we move the contract very fast. I move parents and kids to a contract where, where the young boy or girl admits and owns up to, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And the parents are going to provide this, 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 and this. If you break the contract, they usually do, uh, there's going to be some consequences. First time you may, you may get a pass. You golfers get one. Why not the kid? He gets a mulligan. He even see this is out of the... But by the second time or third time, we have to instill these consequences. Families matter. Listening to your mother matters. Look, I don't want to get into in, into, uh, uh, in utero. Did you know what your mom did for you? All of us. Do you know what your mom did for you? you? You used that mouth to talk to your mother like that? And someone once told me, and it is so spot on. I, when someone told me this, a light just went on. Dads, men, if you let kids, children, talk to your wife like that, then everybody's open season. If I can't be respectful to the one who brought me into this world, well, then why am I going to be respectful to the clerk or the person driving or my coworker? Or when the Bulls beat Detroit back in the day when I was a kid and Detroit walked off the field without shaking hands. Remember that game? And I know Isaiah Thomas. I don't know. I don't hang around with the guy. He went to St. Joseph's. I went to St. Pat's. They always beat us in the conference finals. I knew him in seventh grade. He walked off the field. wouldn't shake hands. That was just, that, there was no class. There was no class to that. There was, there was, there was no sense of honor. So families are important. And there's going to be trouble. There's going to be trauma. There's going to be difficulties. I just talked to someone before I came, before um, I, I said Mass. Uh, Meg, uh, she, used to, she used to work for us. But a long story short, I brought up, I just saw this movie two days ago, Inside Out. I liked the movie. She didn't like the movie. She was too sad. I said, if you didn't see the movie, I, mean, I don't want to spoil the movie. Go see the movie. It's about navigating emotions. And the point was, it's too sad. I said, no. In that, in the movie, I don't want to ruin the movie for you. I don't want to ruin the movie. But some life's events are sad. Don't make me feel happy. I'm not happy. If the bishop calls and moves me out of this parish, I will not be happy. I'll get happy again. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'm going to miss Father Simon. <laughs> Come on, you fell for that one. <laughs> let me out, let me out. No, no, kid. He's awesome. He's totally awesome. So, uh, but it, the point is, the point is, this is true. Well, work with me. Work with me. If something bad happened, a divorce, a betrayal, a disloyalty, um, you had a big event. I remember, I, eighth grade, I did not get athlete of the year. Totally should have got it. I got something for the, I got something because of my handicap. I'm like... I was a rude eighth grader. It was like a part, sorry. It was kind of like a participation trophy to me. 
here I was, I, I scored 23.5 points a game in basketball in eighth grade, and some other kid got Athlete of the Year award. But my mom didn't find out about it, so she didn't show up. She felt bad. I didn't feel bad. I would have been embarrassed if she showed up and I got an award for having a bad leg. I didn't want an award for being a bad leg. I deserved the award because I was the best athlete in eighth grade. The point is, if something bad happened to you in a family, mom, dad, husband and wife, kids, something happened, your mom wasn't there for you when something happened, some big event happened, you were valedictorian and dad got stuck at an airport. Uh, you're, 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 you're 25 and you're married, you gave birth and you didn't get a call from your, 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 your mom because she was stranded in, in an island somewhere far away, we were on the phones. Whatever the situation, that movie proved to me that one bad incident can cloud a whole lifetime of memories. One bad incident, one betrayal, one disloyalty, one perceived, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, smack, what's the word? One perceived smite? One perceived uh, uh, bad behavior towards you. It could color all your other early childhood memories. Look, for most of us, and if you're not the person, please call me. Most of us had awesome childhoods. I had an awesome childhood. I'm the last young priest you'll ever meet. I know there's exceptions. I had all nuns. I had a mom and a dad, a grandma, and, and sisters with veils on and habits. I grew up in Augusta and Western. There were seven churches in a mile radius. Everybody was Catholic. I didn't know what the word Protestant meant till high school. And I still didn't believe it. What do you mean you don't go to Catholic church? What does that mean? What does that, I didn't know. I wasn't being a jerk. Now I'm being a jerk. Back then I was ignorant. I didn't know. Now I, now I figured out intellectually, now I understand intellectually that my Catholic faith is a gift. It's a great mystery in the economy of God's wisdom that we got something in terms of nutrition as members of God's family that other people never came to the awareness of. And we are very, very blessed. So that's my last point. Don't let your family memories be colored by one bad incident. You know, if my, my, my mom's a saint, um, if my mom, if something happened to my mom, I don't know what happened. She, she, she got into a car accident and killed somebody and she was convicted. I would never disown my mother. If my mom was in Joliet, Statesville, I'd go visit her. I would not. If you got something with your parents, if you had awful parents, and again, someone came to me. I'm not giving away anyone's identity. Someone once came to me and says, you don't understand. My mom was this, was this and that. My dad, fine, you get a pass. There are some parents that, there, there are examples. They're extreme. But I've had incidents where I've told people, you're off the hook on your parents. Let it, let it, let it rest. It was just too hard to, 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 to put together. Pray for them. Still have charity in your heart. But you don't need to evangelize. You don't, you, you don't need any further contact. Those are extreme examples. But for the rest of us, if mom and dad, I call my mom every day. The cards you gave me, thank you. I'm going to open them up with my mom. I want, her to, I want her to see the things you write. And thank you for writing them, even if you're faking it. <laughs> my mom doesn't know. Don't tell her. <laughs> but it's all about, it, it really is. At the end of the day, look, when I do baptisms, this is kind of a sad indictment. But this is my experience. When senior has a different experience, Father Simon, I baptize too many children. Sorry. If, if you're one of them, I'm sorry. I apologize. And if you're here, great. I baptize way too many children. I don't know the parents. Parents don't go to church. I don't know them. And when I talk, I, come on, you don't, you don't think. You don't think that I actually think. I'm going to meet a family for the first time and convince them that going to Mass every Sunday is the way of life. You don't think I, you don't think I, think I can do that, do you? Because I don't think I can. It's much deeper. I don't have fairy dust. I can't just... Go to church every Sunday. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Accept your identity as members of God's holy family. I don't have that power. And when I, and when I see this, I always say this to the families I baptize if I don't know them. And even if I do know you, I'll say this. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree is not a cliche. A cliche is something that we say over and over again that, we, that may or may not be true. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree is a psychological truism. We are the GPS of our children. We are their moral GPS. The most basic school of love is the family. 
and getting that straight. What's the best thing a, a father can do for his children? Love his mother. Obviously. And, 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 oh, and, one, and two more things. Sorry. You know how embarrassing it is when Monsignor and I are out to dinner and we look over and we see, sorry, kids, and parents do it too. That is so embarrassing to me. I'm like, I can't tell you what I'm thinking because I'd get in trouble. Like, it's your not to the face. <laughs> to the mechanical, technological device. Come on, if someone's already booing me. No, it's embarrassing. I, my father, when, I, when my father was alive, we had the newspaper. My father told me he's been dead 30 years. If you're in someone's company, don't even read the newspaper. You appreciate their presence. You're here to see them. We lost the family dinner. You can't do this. There's got to be rules on this stuff. And parents with emails. What are you, brain surgeons? You're all neuropsychologists. All of you are neuroscientists or astrophysicists. You don't have to answer that email. Tell the boss, I work till this time. Now, maybe you're a, an ed editor deadline, CBS News guy. I don't know. There's always exceptions. Someone always, or FBI. Or you're the deputy chief or the, or the police department or the fire department. You need your scanner on. But this is the, of all the advancements technolo technology has given us, what a tremendous deficit to the family. And, and some, look, fess up. Give me a call, fess up, let's sit down, let's have a talk. Some people need, need, need to know how to communicate. A, la a, a, a lack of words is not my problem, nor my family's problem. Especially with coffee in the morning with my mom. And I'm people around us are wondering how we even communicate. Like, Communication. Maybe, you need, maybe we need a workshop. Maybe counseling. But we certainly need to be more effective in letting people know how we feel. Okay, lastly, you know, you know how I feel. Listen to your mother. That's the point. Lastly, why were you looking for me? Jesus says to the Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph, why are, you, why are you looking for me? Why are we looking for you? Why am I looking for you? Why am I looking for you? Because my deepest heart's impulse is for you. My deepest appetites, my deepest longing. Jesus, you're the meaning of my life. You love me like no one else loves me. You love me unconditionally. You were born for me into the poorest of the poorest situations. You lived like everybody else, but even worse, you died the worst murderous traitor's death. Why am I looking for you? I've looked for everything else, and I've looked far and wide and hard. I found nothing like you. Why do you ask me at a time like this, on your birthday? I'm looking for you because I love you. I'm looking for you because I want to thank you for the gift you've given me. Conclusion, we also have an awesome parish family. For all of you involved in the ministries, the deacon gets the credit, the servers, the musicians, all the people in the ministries, all of you, thank you. Those who go to the Adoration Chapel, who silently, quietly, with no recognition, pray for the parish, pray for the needs of the parish, pray for the young people of the parish, for the youth group, for those in the youth group. They don't get nearly enough credit. We've got 70, 80 young people, teenagers gathering once a week, sometimes twice a week, with song and prayer and praise, giving testimonies. God bless you. How about light of the world? The light of the world, people, in small groups. How important, how awesome. Monsignor Hermes has given us, and it, and it, and it ain't me, babe, and it certainly ain't the other guy. Father Monsignor Daniel Hermes. Joseph is his middle name. He's, that's his father's name, Joseph. He, he, he gave us this. God, through him, and you gave us this. I'm so proud to be a member of this parish. I meet people from all over the place. People know about us. They know that St. Thomas is an awesome parish family. So, my invitation to you, if you've yet to be involved, step up. We call all the time. And if we haven't called you, we're sorry. Call back. Don't use it as an excuse. People do this to me all the time. I signed up for, to be in a choir, and a choir, and a, well, call them back. What if you had a bad dishwasher? You're gonna keep a bad dishwasher? You call and get the dishwasher out, and get the dishwasher in, come on. I think that's an excuse sometimes. Well, I signed up, nobody called me. Well, call us back. Get customer satisfaction. Come on, Senior Hermes, report the people who didn't call you.
Okay. Lastly, on behalf of Monsignor and Father Simon, uh, it was overwhelming this Christmas. It really was. Maybe because Father Simon was here. He was gone la last Christmas. He was in Nigeria. It was great that he was here with us. Our house was full of joy. We received cards that are addressed to our wonderful priests. So thank you. Cards, gifts, baked goods, all the things you've done for us. I'm overwhelmed with joy. And it's been an awesome Christmas, and it's going to keep going. Father Simon wants to remind you, if you've yet to give a card, a baked good, or a gift, the 25th is not a hard and fast deadline. 